In this video I'm going to show you how you can connect an existing ext.js application to use ext.speeder as its backend. So right now I have this ext.js application that shows a simple uh, data grid with all the doctors in the United States. I run that application using the Sencha CMD uh, embedded web server that you can see up here. What I want to do is connect that to this uh, generated ext speeder backend that's running down here. If I go into the browser and see my ext.js application right now, this is what I see. It's a simple grid with one single row that's uh, written statically into my ext.js application. So if we go and watch that, I go into app, store, physicians.js, you can see here the same data that you could see on the, in the application is just entered statically as a data block. So what I'm going to do now is change this file so that I instead connect to a buffer store uh, that's filled remotely with data from the XDJ, XD speeder backend. So I'll begin by changing this into a buffer store. Next I can remove the data block since I'm going to use a remote store. So. I write the proxy. And the proxy needs four things. It needs a type that for X speeder application is JSONP. It will need an URL where it can find the X speeder application. And currently I'm hosting it on my own computer, so it's on localhost. The port, default port, is 4567. And then comes the path, and the path is generated automatically with information from my database. So in this case, it's physicians db0 physicians physician. And of course, if you want a shorter or more memorable path, you can configure that in the XP uh, user interface. So I'm going to set a callback key. And the default callback key is simply called callback. And then I'm going to specify a reader that ext.js will use to parse the data. And the reader will consist of three different properties. It will have a root property, and for all ext speed replication, that's data. It will have a id property, and that is for my database currently just id. And then lastly, it will have a total property. And the total property is simply total. So great, now we have everything we need. Oh, one more thing. We also want to set auto load to true. So like this. So now we'll try this application. If I switch back to the internal web server, I can see that it's compiled all the changes. So I could just refresh, and it will instantly fill it with data from my database. And if I open the XSpeed replication, I can see each request that's sent here. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will deploy our generated backend on an enterprise server.